Okay, guys, let's start. Uh, hope you are well. So today our topic is uh, about uh, uh, automatic provisioning and application on uh, on the Kubernetes on Alibaba Cloud. So so I make it the the headline as what if Terraform meets Kubernetes on Alibaba Cloud. So. Uh, I I hope you uh I hope you have some uh background knowledge on what Kubernetes is and what Terraform is. So uh if no uh if not uh if it's not a problem I will uh give some uh, brief or ex explanation on it. So today's our agenda is uh let me talk about the uh. uh uh, introduce the background and the uh, assumptions and and limitations and then the architecture in this case as well as the uh, some modularized terraform files and uh, after after provisioning about the uh, stack lifecycle management uh, and then la uh, lastly we will have uh, I will give you some link to download some resources and then uh, of course uh, finally the questions are welcome so let me start so uh, before before actually start the technical thing I, I want to uh, give uh, some ex some sentence to explain what Terraform is Terraform is actually an automation tool to facilitate infrastructure as code, uh, which plays an important role in DevOps landscape, and it also provides a, a declarative approach to describe and provisioning uh, infrastructure resources uh, with uh, Alibaba Cloud provider and Kubernetes providers. Uh, actually, both of them are official providers. Uh, you, everyone are able to provision an application running on Alibaba Cloud Kubernetes, which is uh, also known as uh, ACK. So from scratch, just by uh, a simple command or script. Let's look at that. So. Uh, because uh, the provisioning process uh, takes about uh, 20 minutes, so uh, I would like to start the provisioning first, and then uh, we can proceed. So uh, I have uh, some script here. Actually, so uh, we got some. We got some uh, Terraform files here, and. Uh, uh, and the provisioning script here. So uh, the provisioning script is basically here. The this one, sorry. Uh, this is more simple. So uh, before before provisioning, we need to know uh, some files, some uh, Kubernetes files. We need to clear and make it empty in order to uh, to make the Terraform uh, proceed. Otherwise. Uh, it will exceed uh, by uh, some failure. So I can just here to press the enter, and then it will, and then it will start start the provisioning process. So at the meantime, I, I just want to show you guys that I don't have any I don't have any Kubernetes cluster here in my Alibaba Cloud account. And we don't, we don't, I don't, uh, I don't, so you can see that uh, the new VPC is, is under provision. So uh, go back to the, to my slide. So from here, uh, let me continue here. So uh, we have some assumptions and limitations on the uh, on the on the whole topic so uh, so let me take some assumption uh, I, I just use uh, the latest version of latest uh, uh, non beta version of terraform and terraform providers so uh, later on I will give out the download link here and then uh, you we have some assumption that uh, 
your Ali, the Alibaba Cloud account uh, doesn't still have some protocol term like, uh, for example, uh, for the Kubernetes cluster, we need to have three uh, SLB instance to be created. So you you still you you have to have quota on it, and then uh, I I just take an assumption that uh, domain name is being managed in uh, under your Alibaba Cloud account in the Alibaba Cloud DNS service. For example, I take I take this. Uh, I'll take this as some example here. So next, uh, we need to have some limitations uh, because uh, our Alibaba Cloud Terraform, Terraform provider uh, still not yet uh, have our container registry supported. So uh, we need to uh, self-manage and upload our Docker image to the registry uh, before the provisioning. And that uh, for layer seven, uh, for layer seven routing and load balancing, the ingress is not yet supported by the Kubernetes provider. So, so uh, the last mile will, will be will be our responsibility to handle it. So next, uh, this is uh, here comes the infrastructure architecture. So. Uh, for everyone uh, not yet uh, using or uh, experiencing our Kubernetes cluster, so uh, it is uh, it is the architecture like that. We need to have uh, we need to have our NAT gateway here to uh, in order to let the uh, EC, uh, ECS ACK worker to go out to pull the uh, pull image from uh, from outside the VPC or outside Alibaba Cloud. And then uh, there are three three SLB with the provision. And one is for the uh, master SLB internal uh, within the VPC and one is the internet uh, internet uh, Kubernetes master SLB for Terraform to uh, to connect to. And then uh, the last one is the Internet SLB, which is uh, for application use. These three SLB is uh, uh, is provisioned by default and cannot be changed at this moment. And then uh, in my in my case, I use uh, I, I also provision uh, an RDS for my SQL for an application to connect to. And then uh, I also have two two uh, document images uh, uploaded to uh, to my private container registry, which is which is now sitting in Singapore. So uh, the first thing uh, the first thing the Terraform will uh, provision the VPC and then uh, and then the NAT gateway and then. Uh, and then the configuration of the NAT gateway, and then uh, provision those uh, six uh, ECS uh, 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 across the zones, and then the RDS, and then uh, at the end it will uh, it will it will uh, pass it to the Kubernetes uh, provider to provision the uh, application on it, and then uh, at the end we can access the the application. After about twenty minutes, so next, uh, I would like to introduce that uh, I basically I uh, separate them uh, separate my package in three types uh, files. Uh, for uh, as you as you can see, uh, this uh, one is the shell script. Actually, it's only the uh, the the only ones uh, the only shell script file, and the others are storing. Uh, Terraform resources definition and the Terraform configurations. So uh, they are now uh, I I put them in the uh, OSS bucket uh, for perfect to download. So next uh, is the Terraform uh, configuration files. Uh, I uh, for everyone if you want to use uh, 
the first step is to input your uh, access key in uh, this uh, access key.tf files, which is uh, your account um, credential. And then, uh, secondly, the VPC config Terraform file. Uh, you just need to specify which region and uh, which uh, availability availability zones you want to you want the uh, Kubernetes cluster running on. And then lastly is the Kubernetes config. Uh, actually, it is uh, optional. And then if you want, uh, if your application uh, will be on uh, uh, Docker registry, which is the uh, public uh, Docker hub, uh, then you will need to have the uh, you will need to put your uh, username or password, which is. Uh, which is uh, private, uh, put it in the config.json. And then next is, uh, uh, let me, okay, uh, let me check about the progress here. So you guys here, uh, you can see that uh, about now is uh, about six minutes. We, uh, I estimate it may take uh, 10 more minutes to, uh, for it to uh, complete the, complete the provisioning process. So uh, we can check about the uh, progress in console here. So you can see that uh, actually the master, the master uh, ECS uh, is provisioned already. And then you can check about it. The, uh, the, the uh, VPC is here the which is here, and then uh, the Kubernetes cluster is under provisioning. And then uh, this is my my image here. Uh, later on, uh, the application will be based on this to-do image. And then uh, for for my OSS package, which is here, I uh, upload here, uh, and it is uh, perfectly accessible. And then uh, the, the RDS is here. It's running already. So, uh, and that the SLB is here. Sorry. So, uh, at the last mile, I would like to show you about my my managed DNS. I just put. Sorry. So, uh, so the you can you guys can see that the SLB, uh, there is one for uh, Kubernetes master, and there is one uh, internet and one one intranet, and then come up here. So. So this is the uh, this is the files uh, for the package. Uh, actually, I don't want, I, I will not go through it one by one, but uh, there are three I need to go through, uh, which is the application uh, files, the application deployment on Kubernetes, uh, which is here. So uh, you guys can see uh, you can you can uh, just make some changes for you to use uh, later on if you need to set up a quick demo uh, to your customer. So uh, for here, uh, this is uh, there is some uh, there are some configurations for the Kubernetes applications uh, for the deployment for the deployment. Uh, you can see here. Uh, Everything are based on some variable and pre-provisioned uh, resources on uh, on the in the inside the VPC or in the whole stack. So here I set it um, the minimum replica uh, equals two and maximum replica equals ten, which is uh, they are they are changeable. And then uh, you can see that uh, the the uh, service port here and the Kubernetes service type. So uh, let me scroll down. This is the uh, Kubernetes uh, deployment type uh, resources. And 
at the end, uh, we need to add some de uh, dependency on it here, and then after that, uh, it is up to you to add the uh, HPA. The HPA is for uh, horizontal port autoscaler uh, to uh, make some uh, autoscaling in the port level that uh, you just need to specify minimum and maximum uh, uh, number of ports uh, that are available to user and then uh, based on what uh, what metrics, uh, for example, CPU usage or utilization uh, as a threshold, so that it can it can expand horizontally. And then last, uh, for each application, uh, we need to expose the uh, we need to expose it uh, as a service. Um, so here, uh, it is the it is the generic uh, generic. Uh, uh, specification of the Kubernetes uh, service for for this application. So I put it here for three. Uh, this is the second one and this is the third one. Uh, later on I will uh, get, uh, I will show you some uh, some ingress which is not uh, right now available by the Kubernetes provider. So let me check the progress here. So and then uh, let me come back here. So this is the uh, shell script here. And uh, we just uh, go, go through it. And then for this, uh, for this, uh, the, the application here, uh, I just uh, I just specify one as a butter and one is a bread, and actually they are Nginx uh, web server. And then the second one is just a, a, a sample application that uh, utilizing connecting to the backend MySQL server, uh, which is on uh, RDS, and then uh, I make it uh, available to I make it available here uh, for the uh, for the uh, service. So you will, uh, so you will be able to see uh, afterward. You will be able to see uh, what uh, I will change the versioning, and you will be able to see some changes here just by some uh, uh, editing the uh, files here. There's uh, maybe some config, uh, just the version image here, and then uh, one the one a command, and then it will it will be provisioned. So let's take a look at the let's take a look at the progress here. So uh, you guys can see that uh, this domain name is under my account. So, so you can see that uh, I have some records here. This is not yet uh, up the update because the provision. Uh, this is the last mile of the provisioning process. So, it is uh, actually almost there. You guys can see that uh, the the worker ECS is there for uh, in different uh, in different zone in uh, under different uh, free switch and then uh, we we just need to wait uh, one to two minutes to complete. It is, uh, from my experience, it is about 15 minutes to 16 minutes for it to complete. So uh, let me uh, proceed in this, uh, in this slide. So uh, this, uh, I mark it as optional uh, because uh, some of our customer would like us to uh, demonstrate about uh, layer 7 routing and low balancing. So, uh, but, but uh, Terraform right now uh, is not yet uh, have such a capability for you to, uh, to uh, set up the demo at this part. Uh, but the stack is, uh, is there, right? So, uh, we just need to uh, 
uh, create the service uh, as a, a cluster IP type and then uh, finally we just create the ingress here and then uh, add the corresponding rules so that uh, you will you guys can uh, afterward can see uh, the layer 7 load balancing and routing so uh, and then uh, after that, uh, we can just show uh, we can show that uh, there are some environment change, and then use the Terraform to uh, change the uh, versioning of the of the application. So uh, this is the I think uh, this is a key, uh, and because the Jenkins uh, the CI/CD server and can can have uh, can have some integrations uh, with Terraform because it has. Terraform uh, plugin in Jenkins so that you can uh, it can uh, bridge up the the CI/CD pipeline so that the uh, DevOps uh, can be can be there can be achieved and that uh, after that uh, you you just need to use the uh, Terraform destroy command to destroy the uh, the whole stack so uh, go back here. It is all. Uh, it is actually almost there. So we just need to uh, wait uh, at the back end to feedback here to be uh, to be running the status. So you can see that here, the the instance are actually ready, and then uh, network ready. Just the container service is waiting. And the uh, and the RDS instance is also is also also in running status. So uh, the 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 status is uh, got some has got some update. The Kubernetes cluster is actually already uh, up and running now. So you guys can see the uh, the progress, right? Uh, and that the warning status for the uh, Kubernetes cluster is uh, here. So uh, we can uh, go here to see the deployment, the status of the deployment, because uh, the to do uh, to do uh, image is quite large for a few hundred megabytes. So uh, I need to uh, give it some time to pull the image here. And then, uh, so we can we can use the uh, we can use this uh, service here already. So here uh, it provisions some uh, EIP for me and backend as a SLB here. So I just click here, and then you guys can uh, can see the uh, the service already. And then uh, at the last, this uh, the whole process complete uh, without error so you can see it you can see that uh, for the uh, for the bread we can just use uh, this domain here and then for for butter so you you, uh, you can see that the server name is uh, starting from bread which is actually a kubernetes port name and then for next thing is the butter so you can see that butter as well here. So uh, next thing is uh, for the layer seven thing that I want to show you guys. Uh, let me check about the to do application status. So the to do application should be uh, should be accessible right now. So you guys can see it. And then uh, uh, let me. The one thing here is that the uh, the uh, to do app here I changed the version here to 1.2 my image version so I I make it safe and then I if, if here I just use the Terraform apply command here just a just a few uh, few second it will be update. Of course, uh, we need to wait again for the uh, for the uh, image update, but uh, there is uh, actually no downtime for the warning update. So you guys can see here, uh, one thing to change is the version 
of my image from 1.0 here to 1.2. So I first press yes here. The uh, it got changed. So we can check it in console here that the deployment is here, the version is here, 1.2. Okay. Uh, let me go into it. Go into it. So uh, the image is being uh, downloaded, and then uh, before before uh, this port is up and running and ready to serve user, other things, other uh, the those existing running uh, port will not will not stop. So that uh, end user will not uh, it the the rolling the rolling update is actually transparent to uh, end user. So you can still see that see that the OS the old version of the application is still here. Okay. Oh. Oh. So, uh, sorry. Uh, the update is already complete. So this uh this is actually here. So the uh com uh, <coughs> it already complete the the up uh, the overall update. So you can check here. The uh, refresh here, and then the port here, and then afterward, uh, those 1.0 uh, version port will be will be killed. And then next thing is the uh, service uh, layer seven layer seven thing. Uh, I just uh, I just do some uh, quick things here to let you sorry to let you guys see the. Uh, the layer seven thing here, and then oh sorry, actually this uh this step you can you can make it in a YAML and then uh make it in your automated uh, script or trigger so I assume it as a microservice here and then create and then later on here for the ingress I just need to create the uh, um, test ingress And then I'll add one more, which is the so uh, here. Later on, we will have uh, so the our ingress. We need to we need some update here. I I'll just use the front first, and then here. My account. Sorry, here. I just need to add a red card here. So, here the IP is there. So uh, right now we can access to the application by using the newly updated URL here.
Let me try one thing here. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, I create one more thing. So here. So I think the the port was uh is is having some problem, but uh for this uh, example you can see that uh it is uh, right now in a low balancing mode. You can see that the the server name and server address uh, keep changes for each uh, request, for each auto auto refresh requ request web request. So uh, this is the uh, layer seven demonstration, and then uh, afterward, uh, I just need to uh, use the uh, use the command to destroy everything. So uh, the the command to destroy the things is about uh, five to six minutes. So we uh, we don't need to wait. And then uh, last thing is the uh, resources uh, package. So uh, I pu I put it here uh, in our OSS for public download. You guys can uh, afterward thank me. I can uh, copy the link to you. And that uh, here is some download. Uh, some binary download and some Terraform providers download here and uh, provide the usage manual because uh, uh, right now uh, our our backend team is uh, keeps uh, actually keep updating the uh, our Alibaba Cloud Terraform uh, provider. So the uh, version release uh, comes quite uh, quite quite short. Uh, Actually, the life cycle of the release of the uh, Terraform provider Ali Cloud is quite short. So, uh, maybe one to two weeks or three weeks, uh, the version will be updated. So, uh, I just uh, keep the because uh, some of the some of the syntax is based on this uh, uh, version of provider. So, uh, for utilizing uh, the package, it is better to stick on these two. Uh, already tested uh, provider version. Today's uh, sharing is pretty much. Uh, thanks for the support.